aftermath of the bloodletting called the Civil War, thousands of ruthless, restless, searching men traveled west. Such a man is William Colton. Like the others, he carried a blanket roll, a proficient gun, and a dedication to a new chapter in American history, the opening of the West. Colton. Colton, isn't it? Colton. You're a long way from Shiloh. You are too, Mr. Booker. Have some water? Help yourself. I heard you'd become a minister. Almost two years ago. I'll get it. Got a wife, too, I hear, huh? And a child in a couple of weeks. Been a long time since Shiloh. Good memory, Mr. Booker. Not so good. I'd almost forgotten Shiloh. Well, I never could. Because there was a crazy rebel captain who picked me up out of a mud hole where I was bleeding to death and carried me on his back for a half a mile. That crazy rebel captain saved my life. I was trying to prove a point, that's all. Simply that Texans have strong backs and Yankees bleed easy. <laughs> well, I can see both points. That's why I'm here, Booker. I'd like to repay the favor. Was not necessary? Uh, maybe not, but uh, I'm partial to my skin. And when a man saves it, I uh, can't just write it off. I uh, heard tell that uh, you'd come west and that you hired yourself out as a gun. Just how good a gun, I didn't know until uh, oh, about a week ago when I was in Dodge and heard some talk. Most of it came from a man named Danine. Yeah, I know the name. Seems you shot down both of his brothers. His two brothers were something a little less than animals. One of them was responsible for the death of an 11-year-old girl. I was deputized, Mr. Colton. This wasn't any barroom brawl. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Danine doesn't make that distinction. He's found out where you are. He's coming for you. I figure they'll be here sometime before nightfall. That's what you figure, Mr. Colton? The law is about 20 miles from here in the county seat. Danine will have his men with him. You'll need all the help that you can get.
that crazy rebel captain that I was talking about, I uh, figured he'd place great stock in a man's right to try to stay alive. I assume that included his own. He addressed naked for the occasion. That crazy rebel captain found himself a god, Mr. Colton. And a fate that doesn't have to get packed into a gun chamber. I got all the help I need. Even if you read it aloud, Mr. Deneen and his party won't listen. You've seen what eight or ten or twelve bullets can do to a man's body. Bullets, cannonballs, and long knives. I'm an expert on how men can leave the earth, Mr. Colt. Why don't you come in now? We'll be having dinner soon. You can stay for the Vesper service we hold in the evening. Vesper service? This evening? This evening at seven. This evening at seven, Reverend, you may not be alive. Be no blame to you, Mr. Colton, if I'm not. Nice heft to it. So's a pitchfork, a bag of grain, an armful of kindling, and this. Yeah, it's true. But you've forgotten, Reverend. You just don't recollect the nice warm feeling you get when you know that your gun's in your holster. And that you can use it as well as any man. Forgotten, Mr. Colton? No, I don't forget. I can't forget. The use of a gun takes the years very well. This is Mr. Colton, dear. I've asked him to stay for dinner. You're more than welcome, Mr. Colton. Thank you, Mrs. Booker. He's a good man who has a point of view about guns. We'll give you a good dinner in our point of view, Mr. Colton. I'd accept your point of view, Reverend, if I were someplace else. Say, a uh, sitting room in Boston, someplace where I wouldn't have to put it to a test. It's already been put to a test, Mr. Colton. Some 2,000 years ago on a cross. Hit your horse, Mr. Colton. We'll be having dinner in a little while. I was telling Mr. Colton it's a small world. Last time I saw him, he was a hard-pressed captain of some equally hard-pressed Union cavalry. <laughs> Thank you. What is your trade now, Mr. Colton? No, no trade, Mrs. Booker. Unless you might call uh, searching, looking a profession. When I've got time, I'm not being pushed. We know all about time, Mr. Colton. Or the lack of it. My husband and I have become experts at looking at clocks. Oh, book. You've got to... Prepare the Vesper service. You're quite right, my dear. You and Mr. Colton chat for a bit. I won't be long. Oh, please. This time... Talk to him, my dear. Make him feel at home, huh? Can I get you anything else, Mr. Colton? Oh, thanks. You know what's happening, don't you, Mrs. Booker? They found him again. They found him before? They always find him. Always. They found him at Fort Meade in the Dakota Territory. That's where we were married. Then we went to Powderville. They were waiting for us there. We went up north to Wolf Point. 
They burned our house trying to get him. We hadn't been in Judith Gap three days before they rode into town. And we left Virginia City at two in the morning, not a half hour before they got there. They always find him. That's what they live for. Danina and the rest of them. I'm afraid you've run out of time, Mrs. Booker. They're due here now. Past you. Your husband has got to defend himself with a gun. Oh, he won't do that. God knows how many times I've asked him to defend himself. Ask him again, Mrs. Booker. You better ask him again. should stay for the Vesper service, Mr. Cole. Well, I wish you wouldn't. At least let me get you a gun. Didn't my wife tell you? I'm a very stubborn man. We have to leave. We must leave. No more running, honey. We talked this out. It only prolongs it. it. Only holds up what has to be. But why does it have to be? Book, I'm carrying your son or your daughter. I want you to live to see them. <coughs> Come. Fuck. <coughs> please. Please. It's almost time. Congregation will be coming in. Rest. The congregation and five men will see to it that you never preach another sermon. That may be. But I promised my God I would never again fire in anger. I would never again take a human life. I cannot turn my back on that promise. Not if I want to call myself a man of God. Even when I shake inside with hate, even when I know that a gun, any gun, is an extension of my arm, a part of myself, and that I have a talent for killing that is so special and so perfect. Even then, with the knowledge that there are evil men who have no excuse for staying alive, I cannot break my pact with God. I have to leave justice to God now. Well, good luck. I wish you well. You won't stay for the Vespers? No, I won't. I never was one for a long service, but I don't care for them too short either. Mr. Colton. Thank you. Make good speed and God protect you. And you, Reverend. May he protect you. He's all you've got. He's all I need. Handle that gun. You're riding with angels. Next time you won't be so lucky. Easy, friend. I'm not inviting. Just so long as you're not related to the reverend of the church there. Oh, yeah, why? Because we're gonna blow them apart. We're gonna spread them up and down the street. Him and anybody wants to call us. Hey, you brave men. How many are there of you, huh? Five? Just five men to gun down one man with a Bible. Well, I'm in the presence of courage.
I changed my mind. Thought you might need a quarrel. Well, why don't you come in, folks? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Reverend. Good evening, Mr. Cowboy. Good evening, Reverend. Doctor, you sure everything's all right? We'll be all right. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Deacon. Go inside, Henry. Good evening, Reverend. What's your sermon for tonight? It's a Vespers service, Mr. Deneen. You're welcome to join us. You're welcome to join us. We'll give you five minutes to say your prayers. Five minutes. There's gonna be a killing, Reverend. It'd be a little safer if I could do it out here without a lot of people around. The service will last for one half hour, Mr. Deneen. If you can wait until then, I'll oblige you. If not, the doors won't be locked. We can still leave. Don't cry, honey. Don't cry. Be so kind as to close the door. Don't lock it. Now, friends, page 21 of the prayer book. A moment of silent meditation. Our scriptural reading today is from the 23rd Psalm. Hey, Booker! Your five minutes are up! Let's get outside! The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right now, Booker! You come out, or we come in! He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me. All right, Booker! You had your chance! <laughs> He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. <laughs> he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Alice! Alice! Get out! I'm all right. 
Better get her over to my place. I don't know about the baby, but she'll be all right. Are you sure, doctor? It's in the shoulder. She'll be all right. Mr. Colton. Oh, I'm all right. It'll mend. You took some lives tonight, Reverend. But you saved some, too. I must remember that. I must remember to dwell on that. Forgive me. Please, God, forgive me. Sounds like a boy. He's a boy. Congratulations, Reverend. Thank you. And thank you for your help, Mr. Colton. What'll it be now? Still a long ride back and forth to no place in particular? Back and forth until I find the place. Ever figure out what it is you've been looking for? Oh? A lot of gold, maybe. Maybe the secret of longevity. Maybe, uh, maybe just a man better than myself. Huh? When I find out, I'll let you know. I'll uh, send you a letter. Do me a favor, Reverend. Tell that son of yours when he grows up, if you will, that there was a maverick out in the street the morning he was born who wished him well. I'll tell him. Thank you. 